Welcome to Naval Horizons. My name is Pam Jocelyn and I'm an Albert Einstein Fellow with the Naval STEM Coordination Office. And today I would like to welcome Lieutenant Colonel Scotty Black. And I would like, uh, Lieutenant Colonel, if you could please tell us more about your title, please. Yeah, so uh, Scotty Black, uh, Lieutenant Colonel of the United States Marine Corps. Um, and uh, so Lieutenant Colonel is just a rank. So in the Marine Corps, about every, you know, you come in, you, you commission as a second lieutenant, and about every two to four, or initially every two years, but then as you, as you get to captain and above, or about every four years, they kind of look at you, look at the entire population, and then they select a, uh, a certain number to promote to the, uh, the next rank. Um, so that's kind of the, the title of lieutenant colonel. Um, uh, by trade, I'm an F-18 backseater WIZO. Um, and then uh, right now, I'm a PhD uh, candidate at Naval Graduate School. So you said you were an F-18 backseat WIZO. Could you tell us more about that or elaborate upon that, please? Yeah, absolutely. Um, so a WIZO is, uh, stands for, it's WSO, so Weapons Systems Officer. Um, so in, uh, in the F-18 or in some of our other platforms, some variants of our F-18, it's a two-seater aircraft. So we have a pilot up front and a WIZO or Weapons Systems uh, Officer or Operator, sometimes called, in the, in the backseat. Uh, so what we do is we share responsibilities. So the, the WIZO typically is more focused on the sensors, so how to employ weapons. Uh, the pilot's more focused on the airmanship, and that goes back and forth, so we kind of trade those responsibilities. And the reason why we have two versus some aircraft have one is really for the, due, uh, due to the complexity of some of the missions we perform. So the F-18, one of the missions, for example, is uh, forward air control, so a lot of stuff going on. We're, we're, we're dropping weapons in very close proximity to friendly forces, so we do need two people uh, thinking about it. Others are kind of some of these more complex uh, mission commander type roles where we have two folks who kind of deal with the mission at hand, can do it better than a single individual trying to do it all alone. That's awesome. So did, did you start off as a, as a, um, in the military or did you go to school first as an undergrad? Yeah, so I, I started off, I went to college uh, first. I went to a small school uh, in, in the middle of Missouri. Um, and then actually while I was there, I actually I was in Air Force ROTC for a few years. Uh, decided, you know, that that, that wasn't necessarily for me. Um, and ended up uh, going, uh, just before I graduated, into the Army Reserves, just for a few months. Uh, so try that uh, part out. And then finally, after I graduated, decided to uh, commission in the uh, United States Marine Corps. Um, so that's how I came to be uh, a Marine. Okay, wonderful, wonderful. And then you um, enrolled into a master's degree program. Um, how did you get involved in that? Yeah, so the uh, Marine Corps has this uh, program. It's a graduate education program. So, um, and it's pretty, it's pretty uh, amazing that, the, especially a military service, every every uh, every year they look at the population who's moving and they select, uh, you know, 10, 20 percent of the folks to, to go to school. So even though we're in the business of defense you know, we've realized the importance of education. Um, so at that time, Marine Corps selected me, hey, you're gonna go to the Naval Postgraduate School and get a master's in uh, modeling virtual environments and simulation. Uh, and that's how I kind of went to the Naval Postgraduate School uh, to get that uh, degree. Okay, great. And could you describe to the audience what, what modeling um, would be or in a little more detail, please? Yeah, so uh, modeling simulation, um, essentially, so if you look at a model, it's kind of an abstraction of, of some phenomena, right? So it's a study of, hey, how do we create these models? How do we, how do we take something and create a model? And then simulation is essentially a model over time. So, and we use simulations uh, and models for everything across the services, everything from kind of engineering work uh, to test and evaluation. Yeah, but you know, from the Marine Corps perspective, what we're very concerned, uh, very interested in is the, uh, is the training side of it. So that's where we use, do a lot of modeling simulation work. And how do we train these Marines um, better. So we have live training, correct, or that we go out there and do mm -hmm. in preparation uh, for what we plan on doing. Uh, but then we have the, uh, the simulation side so we could expose Marines to scenarios, situations that we couldn't replicate live short of going to uh, combat. So essentially we're building, you know, more effective Marine, you know, potentially, you know, especially these days with virtual reality uh, at home station. Um, so that's kind of the, the modeling simulation and how we kind of use that uh, within the Marine Corps. That's awesome. Um, so you, you brought great relevance and how we could use it within the military. Um, how could we do that um, within cutting edge um, topics like out in, in general in the society and um, let others know how could we use that modeling that what you're doing elsewhere? 
Yeah, so th that's a great question. Um, so right now, specifically within the modeling simulation uh, for my uh, uh, PhD, my dissertation uh, research is in uh, artificial intelligence, specifically machine learning, to see how we could leverage AI um, for, um, for combat simulation, really as, uh, to enhance human decision making. Um, but that, you know, right now we're looking at combat simulation to simulate warfare. Uh, but that could be used across the, you know, not outside of the military, so not just warfare, so any, any complex uh, field. So everything from, you know, climate change is one of those complex fields that's very hard to understand. Um, that, that doesn't, have, you know, it, it, there, there's a lot going into it. Um, others are kind of human performance as well. How do we make, how do we deal with the human body, whether it's medical, uh, things that involve lots of different systems kind of, you know, uh, interacting with each other. Um, that's, I think, an area that's kind of prime for, for not just modeling simulation, but kind of for artificial intelligence, machine learning to help us advance the sciences uh, in these fields. And we've seen them uh, today just, you know, with the, you know, with recent, recent breakthroughs in AI, how we, we've, we, we've kind of, um, we've kind of gone from very little progress to, you know, exponential progress over a very short uh, period of time. Uh, so we should, you know, we could use this same, these same technologies that we're developing on the civilians or outside of the Marine Corps, within the Marine Corps, as well as use this technology that we're developing within the Marine Corps, outside of the Marine Corps, to, again, to deal with very complex uh, uh, domains. Yeah, that's wonderful. Um, what, what decided or what was your, your main interest in, in getting into the modeling? What was, like, do you have a background story that, that you know, shines your passion and how you got into that area? Yes. Yeah, so um, within within the, you know, if you look at uh, for how we train air crew or aviator, uh, it's all it's mostly modeling simulation, right? It's uh, we you know flying the aircraft is, is a very important part, but using simulations to augment the training is is in this you, we can't we can't do it any other way. Um, so realizing how important it is for us to leverage models and simulation to train, because ultimately we're training for a for a mission. And unfortunately, we don't know what that mission is going to look like. So we're training folks to kind of deal with potentially anything that could happen. And for, and for that training to actually happen, since we don't know it's, uh, uh, what might happen, it's, it's, it's crucial that we use kind of modeling simulation tools so we could expose them to all these scenarios, put them in very high-risk scenarios, things that we couldn't do uh, in the aircraft um, you know, to, to, to protect lives. We could do that in simulation. And we could do it over and over and over uh, to get the aviators comfortable with making, you know, very hard decisions uh, in very, con very complex environments. Um, so that's kind of my interest in, you know, the importance of model simulation. We, we recognize the importance in the aviation community. And I think, at, with, at least within the Marine Corps, we're starting to recognize that on the ground, ground side. Uh, historically, we uh, ground side has been mostly kind of live exercises focused, but uh, recently we, we realized the importance of, of doing all these um, uh, more training uh, within simulation. So, so how is modeling and what you do relevant to the average high school student? Yeah, so um, if we think of kind of modeling simulation, it's really, you know, it, it's part um, applied kind of computer science, if you will, but it's also a science within, its, within itself. So um, I think there's a lot of, of research or work that could be done in the, uh, in the modeling simulation um, um, area, but it's also a tool for anybody to use from high school students to college students to even professionals to use in their in their day-to-day -day, um, job by figuring out what does uh, what, what do we do well as humans right and we could do that very well and we should do that and what do we leverage computers modeling simulation artificial mm -hmm. intelligence machine learning um, to do that does very well so it does very well at searching very fast complex or in, in, in the large state spaces we do very well at processing complexity really quickly using kind of heuristics, these different mental models we've, we've developed along, you know, you know centuries, um, right? So figuring out, hey, how do we, how do we apply, applying, these tool, applying these tools, these technologies, um, I think is something that we should start thinking about uh, in our earlier years and start being comfortable with. So if we become comfortable with artificial intelligence, machine learning, and not being afraid of it, but figuring out what is it good at so I could use it for that, I think we're going to create um, um, better, smarter individuals. We've seen that today with just the advances in technologies versus, you know, we think of just the calculator. Um, you know, initially folks may have seen the calculator is, is cheating or you're not learning math, but we found that folks are actually using the tool. We're still learning the fundamentals, but it makes us so much better. Same with computers. Mm -hmm. um, and now with kind of machine learning, it's only going to make us smarter in the future. Once we figure out 
how to employ that. And I think today's kind of youth are best postured uh, to figure out what the possibilities are. We, you know, especially myself, being a little older, I grew up with, you know, I've developed these biases and this is how I would use it. In retrospect, think of, you know, the grandmother on, on, on a smartphone, how they use it versus one of these folks who, who grew up, who are, who's grown up with those technologies. So I think, uh, you know, it's, it's, our, it's our younger generation who are going to really figure out a way to exploit these technologies in the best way versus kind of the way that someone like myself would be thinking about it. So another question I have is for modeling and simulation, could you give us an idea? What would that look like from, for 10 to 15 years from now? Yeah, so model simulation, it's a, it's a, it's a growing field, a rapidly evolving field. Um, so today, as we, you know, as we see, we have virtual reality, reality, augmented reality. You know, what's next? And I think it's going to be radically different 10 years from now than it is today, uh, whether that's holograms, whether that's uh, something else. Uh, but then I think that what's going to be the, the biggest differentiator is going to be the, the combination of different technologies. So right now, simulation, model simulation, not so standalone because it's kind of a science as well. But how do we combine uh, other technologies or other advances such as you know, artificial intelligence, uh, machine learning? And really, because ultimately, I think it's going to come down to the human. Um, so we have all these technologies, which is great, will help us in accomplishing our mission. But ultimately, our greatest asset is the individual warfighter, is the individual uh, human. So how do we combine these, all these technologies in order to, to create a, a more effective warfighter, a more effective, and it doesn't have to just be for warfare, a more effective... Um, a more effective scientist, a more effective, you know, it could be anything from a truck driver. You know, how, how do we combine these technologies? Um, and I think that's going to be the future is figuring out, pulling from all these different domains and bringing them together to kind of advance um, all, you know, all kinds of different domains. How do you distinguish if we're going towards more augmented reality? Will it be hard to differentiate what is real and what is not real? Um, it, it may it may start to become hard to uh, differentiate those, uh, but I think as, as as humans, you know, we are you know our brain is probably one of, it's one of the most one of the most uh, fascinating uh, things we have. Even with all the artificial intelligence, machine learning to date, you know, what we could do with our brain today is 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 is, is, is far superior than any any of these other uh, technologies. Um, and I, but I, so I think identifying those in the future will still become possible because we will adapt. Where technology is not so fast to adapt, it adapts based on how we can adapt it. Um, I think it'll be it'll be harder to tell. Um, but there, there's goods and there's bads, right? There, there's bads in that it could be, be used for deception, but there's good in that we could potentially replicate those same situations that we want to train Marines. Those high stress situations, uh, Marine sailor, airmen. Um, that we can't put them in today. Uh, so it'll be the next best thing. It could be as good as putting them in combat, in actual combat. Um, so that is kind of the, the, the great things about kind of making it more real um, is the ability to kind of uh, do better training in the future. I would like to thank you, Scotty, for joining us today. Um, and your story was amazing and, and uh, incredible. And I would like to encourage the rest of you to watch some more Naval Horizons videos and listen to the stories of other individuals. Thank you.